During the southwest monsoon, from around May to October, it rains a lot in southern Thailand, sometimes an awful lot. But then, once the rain stops, sometimes something quite remarkable happens. This is the outside of my house in southern Thailand. These are flying termites. They may appear similar to flying ants, but they're not actually that closely related. In fact, termites are more closely related to cockroaches. This is a termite allate that's just shed its wings. I photographed this crawling across my kitchen floor. And these are weaver ants who just happen to be building a nest nearby. You can see immediately the body shape is quite different. Most obvious is that termites do not have the pinched waist between the thorax and the abdomen, or if you want to be strictly accurate, the metasoma and gaster that you find on ants. Blind termites are the allates, the winged, fertile males and females often called kings and queens in termite terminology. And at certain times of the year, these allates swarm, looking for locations to establish new colonies. This swarming often happens after heavy rain and vast numbers of them will simultaneously take to the air. Once they settle, shed their wings and pair up, the termite couples search for a suitable location to burrow into the soil. Rain helps soften the soil one reason flights tend to occur after heavy rainfall. Most species do not mate until they have successfully dug an underground chamber. They then spend the rest of their lives underground. But before that happens, they must run the gauntlet of many predators. Very few of them will actually make it. Like many flying insects, termites are attracted to light and so large numbers will accumulate on the outside of windows when the lights are on. So bad luck if you left your windows open. This, for example, is my kitchen window at night. Spiny-tailed house geckos know that windows attract insects, and when termites swarm, it's like Christmas Day for them. There are simply too many termites for one gecko to eat. So many just walk past undisturbed. But some are not quite so lucky. Back outside, the termites continue to swarm. Some are still airborne, and some, having discarded the wings, are now crawling, oblivious to almost everything in their path, except the need to find a mate and then find a suitable location to start a colony. The light I'm carrying to illuminate the video attracts them, and after a few minutes I am completely covered in my hair, inside my shirt, on my legs. Fortunately, termites don't actually bite. Geckos are not the only creatures attracted to the idea of a late night snack. The swarm has attracted the attention of a banded bullfrog. 
Bullfrogs don't move anything like as fast as geckos. But here it really doesn't have to. Banded bullfrogs are also known as chubby frogs, for obvious reasons. But there comes a point when even a chubby frog has had enough termites. And it's time to move on. If you've been stupid enough, like me, to leave a window open, then the floor following morning can look a bit like a battle zone. There's a lot of sweeping up to do, but fortunately there are always helpers at hand. These are pharaoh ants, each one only one and a half to two millimetres long, but clearly phenomenally strong. Pharaoh ants are pretty omnivorous. Spill some sugar or leave a bit of mango unattended, and ten minutes later they're going to be all over it. But they're pretty fond of dead termites. There's lots more I could say about termites, they are obviously a major pest, but also they uh, can be a source of human food as well in some places. But I'm going to leave it here. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, maybe you'll check out some of the others and come back and check out uh, my new one sometime soon. <laughs>